Hey, what's up Wix Nation? Welcome back to another video here on the Wix Training Academy channel. My name is Sarah Michaels and in this video we are going to continue the Wix SEO series where we will start actually diving into how to begin implementing SEO onto your website and just some of our best tips and practices. If you have not already, please make sure you go ahead and click the subscribe button and the bell so that you get notified when the next video drops in the series as we are gonna be teaching you how to, through the trainings here, to be able to generate more leads and sales through your Wix website. Okay, so the checklist that I have up here today, and you are more than welcome to write this down or to just take a screenshot of it if it's helpful, but I wanted to put this in a list here for those of you who are visual. And this is what I would recommend doing when you are going to start putting the SEO on your site. Now, if you are just landing on this video, it might be helpful to go back and watch the previous two videos where we went over, not only did we go over the overview of SEO, but in the previous video here in the SEO series, we actually went over some of the tools to help you identify the short tail and long tail keywords keywords for your website. And it's very important that before you sit down and really start to just type stuff into the SEO, that when you put that one to two hours of strategy and getting that blueprint up before you build will go a long way in the future. And I definitely recommend that. So that's where I would start. So obviously, when you start getting um, adding SEO to your site, you want to identify those short and long tail keywords that relate to your target audience as well as your offer and your product. Now, for the sake of this video here, I selected one of these templates and I'm going to act as if Sandra here was one of my private clients that I would be designing for. Now, if Sandra is a relationship coach, that's one of the first things that you're going to identify when you are sitting down to do your SEO strategy is you want to understand, okay, who am I actually serving and what's my title, <laughs> right? Because that's one of the first keywords that you're going to put into on your site. Sorry, my light's just blinding me a teensy bit. Okay, had to move it. Um, so Sandra's a relationship coach and she is a podcaster. So probably a relationship podcast. Um, now, those would be a couple of great examples of short tail keywords that relate to her niche here on the website. And the best part is that you can see that she has added these very clearly in the text onto the home page. So that's another thing you want to make sure that you're doing on your home page and on your header is underneath of your site title or wherever you have it. If you can implement and like naturally integrate what it is that you do and your um, your category of your products, that's gonna help boost your SEO, especially if it's in the text format, okay? Because your website is going to get crawled by Google and in order to do that, they wanna like make sure that these keywords are relevantly appearing. Now, there are some gurus, <laughs> out there who have previously, or these SEO strategies where they've told people to just, you know, add, you know, add all these keywords onto, the, onto your website. And that, you guys, that's called fluffing. It's called keyword fluffing. And that's not a good strategy. And in fact, that may have worked in the past, but it's not gonna work anymore. And in fact, if you do implement any of these strategies, I know that some people were even being taught to like, um, so for example, they would add text onto the homepage and they'd make it like invisible. <laughs> and then they just type out a bunch of random words. And that's one of the strategy, like no kidding. That's something that people are actually teaching. And I'm like, oh my goodness, that could not be further from what you should actually be doing. And in fact, if you listen to those people, that's actually going to hurt your rating for SEO. So please don't do that. If you can naturally tie in some of the keywords that are relating to your audience and your product and tie those in very, just very fluidly. It should just flow on your website. When you're talking about who, you know, who you're working with, what you actually do, all of those short and long tail keywords can come together in the copy on your website. So one of the first things that you're gonna do 
is identify your main short and long tail keywords. The second thing that you want to make sure that you have done is connect the domain to your website. Okay. Now a domain and bear with me if you are like, this is so basic. We do have a variety of people watching. So in case you are a beginner, I want to make sure that you understand when you go to other places, whether that's GoDaddy or whether you purchase a domain right here through Wix, the domain is like the dot dot like um, sandrafisher.com or bestmarriagepodcast.com. Those are examples of URLs. Now you can buy your domain right here through Wix and with some of the premium plans, you actually get a free domain included. Or if you have gone to a third party site, you can purchase a domain elsewhere. You can get it from GoDaddy or a variety of other places. Um, so that's something you can do. Now you want to connect that domain to the site and you want to make sure that you're not just pointing the domain. Those are two very different things and that is important for your SEO ranking and domain names do better. So for example, I was just working with a client last week and she bought a domain and it was, so when you typed in, like, I think it was like, something. So, so let's just say amazingmiraclecream.com. So let's say that you buy that at GoDaddy, but instead of having the domain actually linked to the site, you just point the domain to your website. What it's going to do is then the actual root of your domain up here, the .com might look something still like this, that like, it might look like www wixsite.com forward slash Sarah Michaels dot test site. Okay. So with this kind of a website, when you're pointing your domain to this, the domain isn't actually the URL isn't connected to your site. So this right here is an example of like a subdomain of wix.com. Okay. So when you're going in and you're saving, like if I click on save, right? If I want to save my work, as you can see right now, this is the domain that it's connected to team com slash test site. Okay. So I want to make sure that I connect the domain so that it is actually going to be really uh, Sandra Fisher podcast.com or whatever, you know, whatever it is that you're offering, make sure that you connect the domain, the actual domain to your site. You can do that by going into the settings and going through the connect a domain. If you don't know how to do that, I'm sure there are probably other tutorials here on this channel. Okay. So that's one of the very first things that you want to do before we start moving into these other categories. Now, the next thing that you want to do is you're going to go in and I would recommend going in here to your dashboard. Let's see settings. Did I pull it up? Let's see here. So we're going to go in here to the site and we're going to go into my dashboard. And what we're going to do is we're going to look up the um, site information. So when you go to, I believe it's under the site settings. Okay. Let's see here. Okay, so here it is under the site settings. You're gonna make sure that you add in your site name. So you'll go to settings underneath of here. If you don't know how to get here, just type in settings, okay? And it will go to your, let's see, site. Type in site settings. Otherwise you can find this underneath of the main menu, but we'll go find it this way. So we'll do site settings, okay? Um, Oh, it's not pulling it up. Anywho, underneath of home and you go down to settings, this is where it's at underneath of the settings tab. So underneath of general right here, you'll go to website settings and you want to make sure that you add your site name. Okay. And it says right here to manage your website title for SEO, go to the editor. Okay. So you'll add in your site name and then you'll see if you've connected your domain, it will be listed here. Now, the next thing that you're going to do is go in here to the marketing and the SEO. Okay. Marketing and SEO. This is where you can start going through getting found on Google. And this is where it's going to say, what's your business or your brand name? And we'll just say Sandra Fisher. I think that's who I'm, I am right now. I'm Sandra Fisher relationship coach. Okay. So it says example, home garden, whatever, Daniel photography, the garden blog, Sandra Fisher, relationship coach. Okay. 
Do you serve customers? And then this is where it's like, do you have a physical address or are you online? So some, some of you might have a local brick and mortar. And now it's gonna ask you, which keywords do you want to use? So you can only use three for your main one. And they say this should be two to four words long and describe what your business has to offer. So this is where I would say relationship marriage coach relationship, marriage, podcast, um, marriage, relationship, let's see here. So that's where you can add in your keyword. So let's just say relationship. Now this is where if I had done, and if you look in the other video, um, if you go online and you do some of this market research and you look at your competitors, so for example, Sandra Fisher Relationship Coach, if I were to go to Google and type in Relationship Coach, I want to see who is coming up. So I'm coming up with Coach with Steph, um, Relationship Coaching right here. So I want to see what you could do is you could take this, let's say that you find a domain and I'm being Sandra and I'm like, hey, I want to know when people type in relationship coaching, what are they t like, what are the SEO keywords that they are looking for when they're on my competitor's sites? Because if you have a competitor and somebody who's already in your industry and succeeding, you can like reverse engineer what they're already doing online so that you can also get listed up there with them. So it's a little bit of market research, but that's where you would want to, that's where you would want to include this portion of it. Okay. So, and then I might add like dating coach for women, okay, or something like that. So let's pretend that these are like the hottest keywords for my niche. And then I'm going to go ahead and click on next. And then it's going to get my SEO checklist ready. The SEO checklist is going to tell me um, step by step what I need to do in order to get ranked and then connected on Google. So this is the SEO wizard. Okay, so underneath of the marketing in the SEO tab here, um, it says get found on Google or marketing home, you just kind of go through this list. So for example, it's telling me to set the homepage title for search results. And then when I click on that, it's going to tell me exactly what I need to do and what I should name my, what I should name my actual homepage. So for example, relationship coach, Sandra Fisher. Okay. So if this is what my site title is or my name or my keywords, that's where I would then go in here and I would pull up the menus and the pages and go into the SEO basics. And this is where, okay, so just so that you can see how I did this, I went to menus and pages. This will bring up your site menu. Next to your site menu, there's these three blue dots for every page. You can either click on the settings, okay, and that's gonna bring you up to all this info. Okay, so SEO basics is here, or the short way to get here is just clicking on the SEO basics right from that drop down menu. Either way, it brings you to the same place. Now, what you wanna make sure that you do is on every single page, you go in and you add a home, um, a site title, and it, you also have a description of the thing, and you wanna make sure that this box is checked if you want the search engines to be able to index this page, meaning they're gonna be able to crawl that page, okay? So you wanna make sure that this is done. This is your SEO basics right here. Once you've done this, you can go back in, and when you click on apply, it will then turn green once you have gone through and done these basic, like little basic checks here with the SEO wizard. Now, this is just using the Wix SEO wizard. The other things that you want to do in order to boost that is you want to go in and you want to add alt text to any image that is on your website and that is not part of like a background image or a column. So whether that's your blog posts, uh, whether that's just an image that's located on your site. So for example, underneath of here, this does not look like I can edit it. Let me make sure. Oh, there we go. Tools. Okay, the toolbar. By the way, I've, I tell you this all the time, but if your toolbar ever disappears and you can't edit something that you click on, go ahead and click on this button right here and just click on the toolbar because 
for some reason, sometimes it just disappears. It's got a mind of its own. Um, okay, so if there happen to be any images here on your website, you want to go in and you can do the settings. Okay, let's see here. Man, let's see, settings. Okay, we'll go into the, so like let's say that you open up the gallery and underneath of this you'll see, and this is just a very small, um, a very small thing, but it's often overlooked. And it's just one of those basic things that can kind of help. So there is alt text available for each and every one of the images if you're using a gallery. So please utilize that alt text, okay? So tell Google what's in the image in relation to that. So for example, you could put like marriage counselor or relationship coach, um, relationship coaching podcast. If your podcast has a name, you would put that in there. So like best marriage podcast, and then you can put your name, Fisher, and then you can even put like www.whatever your website is. Um, okay, now I have heard some people who say, oh, don't do that, right? But this is another thing that I've done and I've gone and added a couple of hashtags in my alt text. Now, hear me out, especially on blog posts because the reason that I've done this is because when, when it goes to Pinterest, uh, if you start pinning these images or if you start creating very pin-worthy content, what's gonna happen is that's gonna then appear in the hashtags on Pinterest. And people like this has driven massive amounts of traffic to one of my <laughs> to one of my blogs. And it was through Pinterest. And when I started to really dissect where the traffic was coming from. It was just the fact that this is how I had done my alt text. Now, this is, j I'm just telling you what's worked for me. And again, I have not claimed to be like the, the best SEO person out there um, or know all of the technical things behind SEO or every rabbit hole. I just personally happen to know what works in real time in the field and what's actually generating leads and sales. So that's where I'm coming from the, with this. Take it or leave it if you've heard alternate advice, but this has actually worked for myself and also a few of my clients, one of which was a, she started a podcast and within a nine month span, we not only got her listed on Google as one of the top podcasts in her in her niche category, but she also started to generate leads and traffic from Pinterest. Again, uh, we went and did this on all of the images, and one of the services she offered was a membership to, for her listeners to be able to do. So she's making thousands of dollars a month in membership fees be, by using some of these strategies and she hadn't at the time yet implemented paid ads. So take that for what it's worth. The next thing that you wanna do is make sure that all of your images have a link so that if somebody finds this image online and they click it, it actually goes back to your website and it doesn't just like dead link and go nowhere, okay? So that's a really big deal. So you can go ahead and click on the page that you want it to link to you can click on done. Um, or if you have a landing page, that's like a lead capture page, you could link it to that page instead. Totally up to you, but I do recommend doing this, adding a title, um, adding the description, and then adding in the alt text and clicking done. Now, it is a little bit time consuming to do this, but again, this is something that's going to pay you out over and over down the road. And it's something that the, the longer it sets, as long as you did it correctly, the better it's going to get. So that's just a couple of things that you want to have done when you're implementing your SEO on your site, the SEO wizard, alt text images, and we can break more of this down in shorter upcoming segments if you would like. Um, so I'm curious if you have used any of these techniques if there are things that you have questions about, please let us know down below. I look forward to hearing from you and seeing what we can help you with. So thank you so much for tuning into today's video. If you found it helpful or you're looking forward to this series and you're excited to implement, let us know down below what your thoughts are. And if you're enjoying it, please go ahead, give it a thumbs up. Remember to click on subscribe and the bell so that you get notified when the next video drops in the series. Thanks so much for watching today and I'll see you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.